When it comes to Pokemon fan games, players usually look for certain features or key elements before jumping into one. This could range from having everything in generations 1 through 9, or something more simple like an easily obtainable EXP all. But most of the time, players want a game to be completed and not much else. And while I personally don't care if a fan game is complete or not, I can respect the players in desire to pick up a game, finish its current content, and feel unmotivated to come back months or even years later to finish the story they might have already forgotten about. So in this video, I'm going to be quickly showcasing 4 completed Pokemon fan games, but not ones you've probably seen in 90% of best fan game videos. These will be less popular, but still worth playing. I promise that there is a very good chance you will find a fan game in this video that you haven't played. So without further ado, let's get started. The first fan game on this list is a pretty simple but promising one. It's called Chaos in Visita and it's pretty much got everything you would ask for in a completed game. From the EXP all and optional level scaling to the new regional forms and mega evolutions, I don't think it'll be easy to get bored of this game once you pick it up. While I consider the main story being finished enough to consider a game completed, this one even has a finished post game that expands upon the story even more. As for the main story itself, I didn't think too much of it. But then again, I'm pretty picky when it comes to storytelling, so I'm sure most of you will be able to find enjoyment in it. The regional forms and Pokemon variety seem to be based around Kalos or Gen 6, which is pretty neat considering how much it's been ignored by both Game Freak and fans themselves. One feature that did separate it from other fan games was that the Pokemon, including the Generation 6 ones, had animated sprites in battle. I want to also thank the developers of this game for including a lot of quality of life features, like the Mover Learner being accessible from the PC. I find it strange a lot of fan game developers refuse to include features like or similar to this, so I will of course give credit where credit is due. Overall, I definitely think this is a worthwhile experience if you haven't played it yet, and if you feel unsure about it, I promise it won't hurt to try it out. The next fan game goes by Pokemon Keisha. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I was originally a bit skeptical about this one at first, but we'll get to my main criticism later. Immediately after picking your character and rival names, you're thrown right into the starter selection, no hand holding or extra dialogue. After that, the game introduces you to some pretty interesting mechanics. A lot of regular items are now required to be crafted rather than purchased. While this may add an extra layer of resource management, it also gives the game a more open world feeling. But a feature that really took me by surprise was the overworld encounter system. Pokemon can still be encountered through random grass spawns, but they will also appear in the overworld for you to see. Not only does this make finding a specific Pokemon easier and more fun, but it also adds a bit more charm to the whole experience. I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, but this game also has terrestrialization, which is pretty cool because not a lot of fan games have that yet. As for the story, once again, it wasn't bad, but it didn't feel like anything super special. On to my biggest piece of criticism for this game, there's kind of just an endless clashing of different art styles. If you don't know what I mean, or haven't noticed by now, some areas just look like they're from entirely different games. For example, the first town and route both have a mostly Generation 3 overworld style but the second town has more of a Generation 4 style. This kind of continues throughout the entire game, and while I don't think it keeps the player from enjoying it, I definitely think a greater experience could be unlocked by sticking to one art style. Despite my big complaint, I still think there's a good game lying underneath it. If I had to pick a fan game on this list that's probably the most well known, it would be this one. This game did get a good amount of attention a year ago, but ever since then I haven't heard very much about it. Which is kind of strange considering how the developers recently released an update that comes with a full official English translation. Pokemon Africanus, again, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, is a fan game that apparently is based on historical events. 
Now, I'm admittedly not very knowledgeable when it comes to real world history, so I can't confirm or deny if that's truly the case. But fiction or not, this game's story is still pretty interesting. While you still follow something very similar to the gym challenge, because of the game's time period, there are a lot of events that you normally wouldn't see in many other fan games. But I should warn you that there is a lot of death in this game. Not really as much blood in other generic edgy stuff, but still a lot of implied death. So do what you will with that information. Other than that, this fan game has animated battle sprites, following Pokemon, and a pretty cool region aesthetic, so I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't. This last game is kind of an old one that I'm sure a lot of longtime fan game players will probably have at least heard of, but if you've only recently started playing them in the last few years, I bet there's a good chance you haven't heard of it. Released all the way back in 2013 was Pokemon Legends of the Arena. Despite it being 11 years old, I only recently played through it for the first time just two years ago. In Legends of the Arena, your goal isn't to beat a set number of gym leaders and then the Pokemon League. Instead, you travel the region while participating in the International Pokemon Championship. While the game's graphics and sprites might look kind of plain, the writing is actually pretty good, better than most fan games I've played. And best of all, the story isn't super complicated either, and is pretty easy to understand in my opinion. But being an older fan game also means a lot less quality of life than most newer ones. So if you're going to play this game, you might want to do so by only training a team of 6, to make sure you don't become underleveled. Even with that said, I still think this is a game worth at least giving a try. It really does fit the old but gold description. At the end of the day, these games aren't perfect. There's a reason why they aren't super well known or at the top of the popularity list, despite being complete. But honestly, that's okay. These are people setting aside their own free time to provide you with cool games without asking for much in return. I do plan on turning this into a series where I quickly showcase lesser known fan games that deserve more attention. So if you want to see more like that, I hope you not only subscribe, but also take a look at my other videos, which give deeper coverage to other unique, interesting, and sometimes unpopular fan games or ROM hacks. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.